This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Vet Candy's podcast in other news, a podcast to expand your idea of what is impacting the veterinary world, veterinarians, and all animal care professionals as humans. We are your co-hosts, Dr. Jen and Dr. Jason Chatfield. If you are not yet a Vet Candy subscriber, why not? Please subscribe for free today at myvetcandy.com. You can also reach us to sound off at any time at Jen at MyVetCandy.com or or Jason at MyVetCandy.com. So today we have a very special guest with us and our topic is going to be wide ranging. And actually, I almost want to say that we're, our topic is young professionals and how they communicate and what they're doing. In other news, we have Marie Bucko, the student AVMA president-elect, on with us. We are very, very fortunate to have you on, but I have one very hard question first off. You ready? Yes. What what exactly does president-elect mean? Does that mean you were elected president and you are president, or when are you starting, or when do you slide up into office there? Yeah, thanks for having me, first and foremost. This is a lot of fun. So basically, like you said, president-elect, how SAVMA works is that we have um, two students from every vet school, and we get together twice a year, and we make up its similar model to AVMA House of Delegates. We're just the SAVMA House of Delegates. So we get together twice a year, once in March, February, so we call it SAVMA Symposium, which is like AVMA convention. I've been. Um, Yes. Oh, perfect. So then you know exactly what this is all about. Jason, so that's- Jason have, you, have you been to the Savma Symposium? Sadly, I have not. However, I did, I did earn a free drink in our hardest class ever because I missed the Savma Symposium because I wanted to go to Dr. Willard's class and told him as much. I got me a free creme brulee, my claim to fame at vet school, but it's that's not about great. me. It's about Marie. <laughs> go, Marie. Tell us, finish explaining Savma. <laughs> No, I think that's fair. I think a lot of our teachers would have appreciated that as well if if any of our students stayed back. But we basically elect half of our officer team and um, at symposium and then the other half at AVMA convention. And so basically in this elect position, um, for president-elect, it's a little bit different than the rest of the elect positions um, because I serve side-by-side with our current SABMA president, who's Kyrie uh, from Oklahoma State. And so she sits on the AVMA board of directors, and then I'm serving as the liaison for the American Vet Medical Foundation board of advisors. And so we work in tandem together. You just said two girls, two women, two females. Yes. In that president-elect mode. And two large animal girls. Two two (laughs) unicorns. It's two (laughs) unicorns, Jason. I'm not really understanding what my response should be. Should I get a whoop whoop or should I be like, boo? I, I don't really know. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to right. not respond. That's okay. That's okay. I, all I got to say is, Hey, looking at you, AVMA, looking at you. Oh, I, I, I see where you're going. Oh, all, right. Yeah. all right. All right. Very yeah. good. Very good. Okay. 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 So future Dr. Bucko. So we actually want to know a little bit because, uh, so Dr. Jason and I, even though we're twins, we did not go to vet school at exactly the same time. We were in different classes. Please don't ask. Just move on from that. Did you both go to the same school? We did. We even lived together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so we had different experiences, even though we were, we were about three years apart. And so we suspect that you're having a radically different experience. So we kind of want to go through some things and ask you, do they still do this? Right? Sure. Okay. Yeah. For yeah. That? Wait, okay. I get the first one. Okay. But it's easy. I have easy questions. You have the hard questions. Listen, when I was in school, we were called the scavma. I know I'm mm-hmm. dating myself. Ever even heard of that? Is it an archaic term? What is, what's so, going on that we changed the name? Still, I'm very confused. Do they still call it scavma? So they don't. Uh, just a couple of years ago, um, SCAVMA would represent the um, student chapter of AVMA for each chapter. But now we're all inclusive. So we're just SAVMA, student AVMA. Oh, very inclusive. How 21st century. Um, uh, very good word. Yeah. Love it. Love it. 
Okay, so I actually looked up a few factoids for our news hounds out there in the Candyverse. So the Savma was actually created in 1969. That's even older than us, Jason. Careful. Yeah. Danger. Okay, I didn't know this either. Marie, do you know how many student chapters there are? There's 36. Um, we have 30 in the U.S., yeah. two in the Caribbean, and one in Canada, and then we have three in the U.K. Look at, she knows her I stuff. Think, I think she needs to get a mic drop. Boom. I, question. I got it. I know what's oh, happening here. That but was a hard one. I was prepared to totally like fluff over that for you, but I didn't need to. She got the numbers, people. Talk about pharmacology. Here she comes. Okay. Thanks for doing your homework, though. This is good. <laughs> yeah. And here's what I was actually shocked about, too, that you as president-elect and your colleague, the president, you guys are representing more than 16,000 veterinary students that are members of the SAVMA. That's incredible. Yes, it is. It's pretty exciting because it just shows how important our industry is becoming and how important it is that everybody has a voice in some capacity or not. And, and so we having these SABMA delegates, so two from each AVMA accredited school. And then we do have a lot of two by two programs where, mm -hmm. you know, like we have universities that will team up like um, Nebraska and, and uh, Kansas State, if I recall correctly, where you do two years there and then two years years at Kansas State. So and you know, they're also represented. That's not for undergrad folks. That's for veterinary school. It's a two and two, which is which is a pretty new approach, but it's allowing a lot more folks in states that don't have a veterinary school to pursue a veterinary medical degree without having to incur all those moving costs immediately. Exactly. So, Same mm -hmm. thing with Utah and Alaska. So you have Alaska Fairbanks, you know, so it's important. And their voices get heard in our Sama House of Delegates as well. That's fabulous. That's mm -hmm. fabulous. And so where are you? I know you're representing all 16,000 and all those crazy places and corners of the world, but where are you? I'm in Madison, Wisconsin right now, which is pretty exciting. Actually, yesterday it was, it felt like fall and today it stormed ferociously all night. And then you walk out there today and it feels like the Caribbean is very <laughs> muggy. <laughs> you don't have the wonderful ocean views. So yeah. it's not as, it's muggy. Yeah. yeah and yeah. that's when your hair just, just yeah. explodes. Oh, good. So yeah. I can finally relate to a bad hair day. Great. <laughs> all right. I'm back, I'm back with you guys. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I want to ask this question too, because you do have 16,000 members. You are a veterinary student and we're going to get to some other, do they still questions? But I want to know, how do you guys communicate with each other? Like with your local chapter there in Wisconsin, but also kind of across the country, how do you guys communicate? Yeah, so that's a great question. So with our delegates, we have those delegates that represent each school and they come to the national, our national events to make up our Sama House of Delegates. Mm -hmm. Within the Sama House of Delegates, we're all broken up into committees with different members of the, so different members from different schools. And we make up committees that cover topics like well-being, public health, government affairs, that sort of thing. And so we communicate that way. And then we also always have joint meetings with the chapter presidents. And so they're also an important piece of the puzzle when it comes to communication. And so when we have time to talk with each other from different schools, we can bring those ideas back to our own chapters and kind of maybe reevaluate things, improve areas, share ideas that are working for ourselves and our school. So it's a really good opportunity for, you know, interaction and, and overlapping communication together. So go ahead, Jason. I was just going to say, that's great. Uh, but what do you, how do you, I think the question also is relating to how do you guys communicate across the country when you're not meeting? You can't do something mundane as call each other, right? That's terrible. You can't Skype all the time, but there's all this technology around. There's Facebook, if you guys remember that. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember that or not. There's something called, uh, and Dr. Jen has this well-versed now, Instagram, I think is what it's called nowadays. I, I don't really know. So do you all use any of those things? And then, and after you answer that, I have a really funny story. Sure. We'll get yeah. to it and then we'll tell a funny story. Those are great points that you bring up. So we do have a chance to communicate with students that are not SABMA delegates through social media platforms. In fact, we have one person on our executive board team that is in charge of a lot of our strategic communications in that capacity. So we have that. We also have the Vet Gazette that goes out monthly as well as our SABMA monthly news. And that includes everything that's going on on the national level, contests, grants, scholarships, because we give out a lot of money for students to be able to travel to different locations, conferences, or even do wet labs at their chapter level. So 
there's a lot of opportunities for us to communicate in that capacity. And so it's really nice and it's beneficial. And so we always encourage also students to reach out to us through Instagram or through Facebook. So it's really nice to be able to have those resources. So a couple of things. So I like Vet Gazette. That's pretty funny. I like the way that rhymes. It just, I like to say, I may use that some other time today in a different situation, just because I think it'd be fun to say. Also, this Instagram situation. So just as an aside, if you guys are talking to it to, about each other, you send an email in the subject line, if it said IG in the email, would you like, hey, I got a question about IG. Is that, is that how you guys kind of say, I got a question about Instagram, or do you, would y'all know what that meant? If someone uh, said IG. I think I would be able to put two and two together, okay, depending on the don't, content don't, of the email. Nah, okay, don't be so sure. There's some of us that are a wee bit older, that okay. it might take days to figure out, and too embarrassed to ask, what is this IG, IG. stuff? Move yes, along. I'm talking about Dr. Jen Move over there. Along. It took her over 24 hours to figure out oh, IG, then no. Instagram, along. she could not figure it out. She had to ask and phone a friend that is hilarious she finally had to say what is this ig stuff that's okay it happened you'll no, never it, forget it now it I, doesn't happen and that happened last week oh, yeah. okay anyway in in other news oh that's um, hilarious i don't know if i can that's hilarious when uh when when dr jason and i actually were down in st kitts uh, last summer doing a lecture series there for the students there, we were actually pretty shocked. They were so exclusively tied to Facebook for their communications. If it didn't happen on the Facebook page, it didn't happen. And this is on the same island. Like they literally were living a few, few houses. That's how they communicate. So we, we were just wondering if that's how, you yeah. know, in a big, con the big, you know, United States, the continental United States, do y'all use that kind of stuff? Because we're all about you know, social platforms and all the, all the new ways to communicate into people, groups of young folk with similar interests. Do they actually use those things to communicate? And is it helpful? Yes. I think both from the UW, from the University of Wisconsin here, we do use Facebook quite prevalently. And then, you know, on the national level with SAFMA, we also use Facebook. And in fact, like, you know, depending on the theme or the time of the year, we have topics that we cover exclusively for themes, which is really nice. You know, it's always nice to be able to reach out to students that way. We also realize that mm -hmm. not a lot of students have Facebook. They're trying yeah. to disconnect. But even as students in our class, I know personally here at Wisconsin, each of our classes have a, a like a private Facebook group. Oh, well, how nice. So we communicate with each other of like relevant yeah. things going on, hanging out, questions about assignments, and then we can communicate with other classes that way as well. Yeah. I think actually that's probably pretty helpful because I, I know when we were going through veterinary school, it was very helpful to feel like you weren't the only person, you know, you weren't the only person who couldn't remember the name of that stupid artery, but at least I would know not yes, to cut no, it. Yes, yes, you were. You were the only person. <laughs> I, I personally funny. never forgot any names of any anatomy ever. Right, right, <laughs> the right. attachments and all of that. What's, yeah, what's, yeah, and, what's an attachment. And let me just oh, share. oh, I get it. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, I got it. Sorry, that let, was a long time just, ago. Let me just share with everyone that it, no one cares if you can name the attachment. They only care if you cut it. And well, it's, like, this yeah, is true. No. Except for your anatomy professor, they really want you to name it. And kudos yeah, to them. You got to learn it at one point. Okay, yeah. we digress. <laughs> We, we do digress. So, yeah, so I think that's fabulous. It helps, like, with that uh, community and more cohesion with your classmates, I suspect. So, so yeah. I have one. Do they still question for you? And then we're going to go to a short break. So, do they still provide free lunch almost every day of the week if you go to a club meeting of any kind? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Dr. Jen's diet all through veterinary school consisted of free lunch. <laughs> Pizza, largely. I 100% agree with you. Yes, I did not gain the freshman 15 in undergrad, but for sure mm. grabbed that during vet school first year, yes. second it's, year. You learned a lot of new things and met a lot of new people, so it served its yeah. purpose, correct? It's All right. Like, but I'll course. tell you, but it's tricky. And so if you're wondering what to do to counteract that um, junk food that we're all eating at lunch, sitting through those club meetings, myvetcandy.com slash college, there is a guide to veterinary school that is available for a free download. It has great tips, including three ingredient recipes, tips on how to eat healthier while you're a student because you can't shop at Whole Foods eight days a week while you're a student. So anyway, so there's a great free guide there that the AVMA Trust and uh, Vet Candy have put together. So we're going to take a brief break. News Hounds, that's so you can run and Google. Go to myvetcandy.com backslash college and check it out. And we'll be right back after a word. Hey, Vets. 
students, did you know that you can get essential insurance coverages, including disability, term life, plus rabies prophylaxis benefits in one convenient package? With AVMA Trust, you can, and for less than 75 cents a day. AVMA Trust offers support when you need it. For details on the coverages, underwritten by New York Life, check out avmalife.org and begin protecting your future today. Show us your scary selfie to win incredible prizes. Vet Candy and Pet Life Radio are partnering up for a spooktastic contest. To enter, just take a scary selfie in your awesome Halloween costume and post on Instagram and tag at MyVetCandy. Hashtag scary selfie. Three lucky winners will take home a $100 Visa gift card. Visit myvetcandy.com slash scary for contest rules and regulations. <laughs> oh, sure. It's all fun and games until someone ends up in a cone. That's right. We are animals. Deal with it. Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome back, news hounds out there in the candy verse. To in other news, we're talking with uh, Marie Bucko, who is the current student AVMA or SAVMA president elect, and she is sitting in Wisconsin, in Madison, Wisconsin. And actually, we didn't ask you what year are you in veterinary school? I'm a third year. Yeah, third year was oh, that was a great year. Pretty much every year for us after first year because we were we went to texas a&m actually after first semester every every semester got better no, every year you, every year in the rearview mirror was a great year that's yeah. how you that's how you looked at it that's true oh i remember first year that was great now that i'm a second better. year so. yes okay so along those lines jason what was the best piece of advice that you got as you entered veterinary school like what was the best like things someone told you what turned out to be true and you're like man they were right on what about that i had to think about that so let me uh you would think i'd be prepared for that question i, I know you're gonna ask that let me let me put that to you while i think about it i got lots of advice from my older sister right and so i had to think about which best piece of advice she gave me that was it was clean enough for another news so let me think about that while i'm thinking about that while the wheels yeah. are turning why don't you give us some of your best advice and then in the, oh, in the 20 okay. seconds, it tells you, to, I'll have one. I'll okay. have a Dr. Jennifer's piece of advice okay. for younger brother, Jason. Okay. So the best piece of advice I got, and Marie, prepare yourself because we're going to- Get ready. Come, yeah. We're coming okay. to you. So the best piece of advice I got uh, that turned out to be probably really like the very bestest was that a, a friend of mine, he was a third year at the time at another school, and he said, Chatfield, whatever you do, don't date anybody in your class. Are you sure he said date? Well, uh, this is a family podcast. Uh, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, yeah, and that turned out to be okay. And, and uh, for those of you who might be wondering, like if you're an undergrad and you're thinking of vet school and you're like, why aren't they nice people? They're lovely people. But you see those same people eight hours a day, five or six days a week for the next four years. So try breaking up with somebody if it goes badly and seeing that. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> So, Marie, right. what do you think about Or, oh, Jason, are you ready? Well, go to Marie. That's fine. Okay. Marie, what's the best piece of advice you got? And what do you think about the piece I got? The piece you got, I think, I mean, that's all advice is really good advice, I guess, right? It depends on your classmates, I would want to say, right? I mean, I have some friends that are in vet school that are dating their classmates, and they <laughs> they seem to be doing great, and I'm really happy mm -hmm. for them. I have had classmates that did date each other and it didn't go so well, but they seem amicable and they're ah, being great adults about it, which is always nice. Excellent. Okay. And what, so what piece of advice did that you That is very well said for the president elect of anything. That was very well it's said. true. It's <laughs> Whether or not it's true or not, it's irrelevant. It was That's very right. well said. Who knows in that room? Who's in that room with you? Uh -huh. I think all advice is good, but you don't have to follow it. I'm going to just why. This is what we can do. Anyway, it's very good. Yeah, the best so, advice I would say that I received was to, it was the first week of, I think it was like, no, during our open house. And they said, don't ever let your learning get in the way of your education or your education get in the way of your learning. That's what it was. Excellent. Meaning, you, you know, you were constantly trying to prepare for exams and you're trying to learn the material for the exam. But mm -hmm. his focus was like trying to hound on you of saying, 
you know, don't learn so much for your exams, but rather to be veterinarians, whatever that looks like, whether you're going to be a pathologist, a large animal vet working in the government, you're going to go into academia, or you're going to go and specialize. Don't let your education get in the way of your learning and try and understand for the real world and not just for this exam. And more importantly, have you followed said advice? I've tried, but it is so hard. It's, it's hard, isn't it? That's a good piece of advice <laughs> after you're out of vet school. It is really, really, but well, that is, that is an so excellent hard. piece of advice. <laughs> Okay, I think my I think my piece of advice tops all of you guys. Naturally, uh, coming coming from Dr. Jennifer Chatfield as a third year to a, to a young first year, she said, "Now listen, Jason, you're not the first person to get into vet school. You're <laughs> not going to be the last person to get into vet school. So don't walk around like you are God. All right, you need <laughs> you to get through class and remember." Other people have been there before. Don't act like you own the world because you're in vet school. And I said, what are you talking about? And proceed to walk around like I was, you know, <laughs> you know, God's gift to everything. And you get put in your place really quick in first semester of vet school. So good advice, which I did not follow. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> and then she said, and then she also told me the same paragraph and pay attention to Dr. Willard's class. You'll thank me later in third year. That's right. I did. I got a creme brulee. So good for you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I think it's always, it's always a good advice to remember you're just a person. You're not the first, you won't be the last. And all you can do is try as hard as you can. If you remember that, I think you're, you're okay, no matter what type of graduate school you're in or what profession. So yeah. Okay. So Wait, uh, also the other piece of advice I've just, I'm taking over is she said in whatever you do, don't feel pressured to join Scavma. I don't really know what that meant, but that's what <laughs> she told me. I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't join anyway. So, oh, I'm just kidding. We're just joshing with you. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, but Scavma does provide some, some good benefits for veterinary students. That's a fact, the cohesion and all that. Okay. No. So do they still, or did they ever at your school have what's called combined exams, combines, no? Like, I see you're looking up to your friend. Are you phoning a friend for confirmation? <laughs> it, it was, I'm trying to think if, if you were thinking like multiple subjects in one exam, is that what you're saying? No, so when I, when I was in veterinary school, we had combines. And so starting with the fourth week of first semester, every fourth Friday, you came in at 8 a.m. and you got a packet of tests, one for every class, and by noon, you had to turn them all in. No. So, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the Olympics every Friday. It kind of felt like the Olympics every Friday. So do they Marie, do that's, that's just because, you know, back when Jen went to school, she had to walk all, you know, 12 miles uphill and snow and all that kind of stuff. So you guys, <laughs> what she's trying to say is you guys have it easy, yeah. but no, I'm just kidding. She's barefoot, right? Yeah, exactly. Barefoot. Exactly. I forgot that part. So you, you've got the story as well. So I, I get it. We actually didn't have those either. So that was archaic, right? They just oh, oh, come on. You're so much younger than me, Dr. Yes. Jason. Yes, I am. News Towns, I'll reference you to our profile page where it indicates we are, in fact, twin <laughs> veterinarians. Um, okay, so as a third year future Dr. Bucko, what's your biggest fear post graduation? Like, what nightmare makes you wake up in the cold sweat right now, imagining yourself graduated? Do you have one? I think I do. And I think it's a little bit different than most students. And for me personally, I would say my biggest fear is within my profession of food animal medicine. And what I mean is um, before I started vet school, I started a career in Washington, D.C., where I worked at the FDA and USDA mm -hmm. working for our uh, undersecretaries and commissioners on food safety uh, antimicrobial resistance. And while I was out there, you know, you get to hear a lot of constituents and hear what their concerns and their passions are. And as we move on to society and time passes on, I, I'm noticing more and more that there's sometimes in certain areas of life, a lack of appreciation for science. And my concern when I'm going into practice, or if I'm going back into the government, I'm not quite sure what that looks like yet. But definitely mm -hmm. in large animal food, animal medicine, I want to protect that industry. I want to protect animal agriculture and the veterinarians that work within it. And I am concerned about media and misconceptions. And, you know, my whole life I was active in FFA and 4-H. And so we do get exposed to it a little bit. But, you know, we preach to the choir sometimes when we're growing up in an ag community and everybody appreciates what we're doing in rural America. And um, 
when you get out into the big world, you realize that people have different opinions and it's good, but it's important that we base them on facts and science. And we encourage people to come and learn about what we're doing and how we treat animals and um, both as a producer and a practitioner. And it's important to, to give people both sides of the story and to educate them most importantly, and then they can make their own decisions. But that's definitely a concern of mine. I'm concerned about that too, because I like to eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Me you, Jason? Uh, I was just concerned about the first spay I had to do, that was way deeper. I feel like I wasn't paying attention. That was well put and well said. So you're concerned about, and forget about both sides of the story. We would, we would like to just not get in too off into the uh, landscape here. We'd settle for the truth every once in a while, right? We do. We just like the truth. Not, not the, just give me the truth and move on with life, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't interpret for me. Just give right. me the fact. Yeah. yeah. And so what do you think about the fact that there are some issues, especially related to a food animal practice and food animal practices, right? Not just the practice of veterinary medicine and food animal, but food animal practices and how we we manage large ag in this country to feed the country and feed the world. There's some divisions within our profession, some disagreements about that. You know, do you have any insight into that at all? I think we're very fortunate to live in a society where we can pick how our food is produced. Mm -hmm. And that's a privilege that not many other countries or societies do have. And I think with medicine constantly evolving and improving, we're doing our best with the resources that we have. And this is our livelihood. And you know, just as well as I do, that veterinary medicine is not a profession where we go and try and make money or we try and become millionaires. It's something that's near and dear to our heart emotionally. And so we're trying to make a better society and a better world that we live in. And I think everybody's doing that as well as producers. I grew up on a beef farm in South Central Wisconsin and my cows were the favorite thing that I looked forward to every single year when it came time for calving. And so excited to name them and I was so excited to grow them and learn about the science of nutrition and how marbling works and taking the best care that I could and giving them baths weekly. I mean, they were spoiled. And I realized not everybody has a chance to understand what that looks like. And in medicine, we're doing the best that we can to to just deal with the situations when they come our way um, and educate people as much as we can. Yep. And I also think sometimes if you don't know what you're talking about, you should be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a piece of advice we should start sharing, don't you think? <laughs> so so if the last time you were on a dairy farm was never, or the last time you were at a CAFO was never, maybe you don't need to wade into that conversation. Yeah, maybe. maybe you have no right to offer an opinion, especially a wrong opinion. Anyway, sorry. Maybe. Sorry. Or an opinion totally based on emotion from um, misperceptions that you might hold because you've never been on one or you've been on one. But not I think two. that's certainly <laughs> a challenge. You're not wrong. And I think hopefully if the conversation presents itself that we could yeah. have an opportunity to talk to them and educate them and maybe understand why they feel the way they do. I learned that lesson very harshly when I was in D.C. I thought everybody understood how animal agriculture worked and that. We all have the best intentions. We're doing our best. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. And having a respectful conversation, I think, is a really good life skill that we can all learn and improve and work on um, Mm -hmm. to hear their side of the story and try and present the best we can, the facts that we know and we've experienced and hope that they receive it well. And yeah. maybe they can get a better understanding of why we do what we do. That's right. That's right. Very, very well stated. Hang on to that. <laughs> so, so Dr. J, yes, please. You were in Washington. Did you feel the same way? When you were there, Did you? Uh, were you shocked that all the uh, people were probably super ignorant of exactly how their, their food got from, uh, you know, the farm to the plate? Or maybe they didn't care or maybe they had an opinion about it. I have no idea. I, I wasn't in D.C. You guys both were. So was it just a culture shock when you said, what are you talking about? This is how we treat them. This is what we do. It's perfect. Or were they uh, had all kinds of misinformation? There There were a lot of very well-intentioned people who had no idea what they were talking about or what they were doing, but that did not dissuade them from stating it confidently. So... I think that could be said of a lots of places in Washington. So that's, that's yeah, probably I would it. agree with that. Everyone out there, it's a concentrated area where everyone is very passionate about what they feel. Well, and many of them are very passionate about themselves also. And so it's a tricky, tricky land to navigate, that political landscape. But anyway, so uh, yeah. So Marie Bucko, I have one more question for you. Do you know our friend, Dr. Douglas Kratt? 
I do. So he's a wonderful human being, isn't he? He is. All people in Wisconsin know each other. Isn't that how that works? <laughs> but, I mean, if not, we know their cousin or yes. their in-laws. Or yeah. they're on the IG together. They're on Insta yes. together. Well, although I don't think Dr. Kratz on Instagram. <laughs> no, no, I don't think he's on Instagram. I'm not either, folks. Don't look for me there. You won't find me. I bet Dr. Kratz knows what it is, though. Right, right, right. Probably. So, Dr. Jason, do you have any other topics that you want to run past our Marie Bucko? No, future Dr. Bucko did great and had all kinds of insight. And, uh, you know, I'm going to have some introspective thoughts now on a lot of stuff. So kudos to you. Thank yeah. you for having me. You guys are yeah. welcome. It's been wonderful. So, so news hounds, don't tune out just yet because, of course, we're going to issue a vet candy challenge because that's what we like to do to the candy verse. So uh, we have some lovely Betsy Johnson backpacks, right? We have the student AVMA president elect on. So we're going to give away some student friendly items. And you're gonna, we're going to do it with a trivia question. What do you think, Marie Bucco, if I issue a trivia question? I love this. Okay, so if you know the answer, you can't say. You have to tell me after the podcast, okay. uh, Marie. And Jason, you can't say the answer either. I'm probably so, not going to know the answer. Well, you can try again the next time. Anyway, okay, so if you know the answer to this and uh, you are the first, well, we have two backpacks. So if you are one of the first ones to email us with the correct answer, then I will ship you the swag, right? And so here's the question. Are you ready? Everyone's got a pen. You're ready to write it down. What is the other name for the wheelbarrow disease, right? What do we call the wheelbarrow disease? And if you know anything about me, it's one of my very favorite pathogens. So don't Google it. Marie's Googling. <laughs> So if you email, uh, I, either on. Email. I think that it's just being resourceful. What's the difference between Googling and asking a friend? I don't understand. So go ahead, get to it. Just email faster than your friends. Email faster. And the email address is uh, Jen at myvetcandy.com. And if you are one of the first two, I'm going to send you a Betsy Johnson backpack. You'll be the coolest kid on the vet school campus. And if you want to see the rules, as always, you can find all of our challenge rules at myvetcandy.com backslash rules. And uh, we will we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks so much for tuning in to In Other News. And please, if you just want to sound off, let us know how we're doing or make a suggestion for topics. If we read your email on a subsequent podcast, we will send you some swag. If you have the correct answer for my trivia question, because I know there's a lot of veterinary students listening out there. What is another name for the wheelbarrow disease? Email that in. We'll send you some swag. My, Jen at MyVetCandy.com or Jason at MyVetCandy.com. And that's all we have for you today. Signing off from Florida, the farm. As always, in the basement in Miami. That's right. And Marie's in Wisconsin, surrounded by cows. We'll catch you guys next time on In Other News. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.